Matthew chapter 8 verses 23 through 27. Last week we talked about following Jesus. A scribe and one of the disciples came to Jesus and asked him if they wanted to follow him. And today we're going to go over the passage regarding Jesus' authority over nature. Even though today's passage starts from verse 23, let's go back to verse 18 from last week. And Jesus said this, He gave orders to depart to the other side of the sea. That was verse 18. And verse 19, that's when a scribe came to Jesus and saying, I'll follow you wherever you go. And we had Jesus' response. And after that, another person showed up and asked him if he can follow him as well. But Jesus said, follow me and allow the dead to bury their own dead because he was saying that he wanted to bury his father that was verse 22 then verse 23 says when he got into the boat his disciples followed him we do not know what happened to a scribe or this disciple in this conversation but verse 23 says the disciples followed him so we see a lot of spectators versus actual disciples who followed Jesus. And right after that, they faced a challenging situation. Verses 24 and 25 says, And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being covered with waves. But Jesus himself was asleep. And they came to him, the disciples, and woke him, saying, save us lord we are perishing so in the same situation if you look at the circumstances jesus did not really pay too much attention to that but the disciples did so two different perspective as christians what are we going to look at what are we going to rely on we have to think about those things in addition to that we have application in this passage Let's take a look at the disciples' background and Jesus' background. As we covered in Matthew chapter 4, some of the disciples were fishermen. So they're supposed to be the ones who are expert in this situation. Because they're going across the Sea of Galilee, that's where they did their business of being fishermen. So they must have gone through a lot of difficult situations there, but in this occasion, they didn't know what to do. On the other hand, Jesus was introduced as a carpenter's son, so he must be in carpentry. Sometimes we rely on our expertise. Sometimes we rely on our experience, the people that we know. The lessons learned here is we have to always seek God's guidance. So let's take a look at the passage from Jonah and see how normal people react and a believer react in the same situation. A great storm on the sea came upon them, so that the ship was about to break up. Then the sailors became afraid, and every man cried to his God. And these are the Gentiles, they're not the Israelites, so they had their own God to worship. So every one of them somehow had different God to worship, so they have to look for their God and cry to their own gods. And they threw the cargo which was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. So they did all they can do to make it easier for them to go through this situation, which we have to do the same thing as a believer. But we have to apply this one to other things. We can say we can just go look for our own resources, the people that we know, people that we trust, or the things that we rely on, our own ability, our own position and power. That's not how we live as Christians. But Jonah had gone below into the hold of the ship, lain down and fallen sound asleep. But this is not the main point of today's passage, so we're going to go to the next bullet point. So the captain approached them and said, How is it that you are sleeping? Get up, call on your God. We've done all these things already, but you're the only one who's left out. Please call on your God. And he continues, Perhaps your God will be concerned about us so that we will not perish. So some people in today's world may see it as a statement from this person's faith. Right, he believed in God. That's why he did this. 
But if you look at it carefully, it's not about his faith. It's about exploring different options. It's a last resort. They've gone through everything they could, but they could not find a solution. So they found one more option to ease up this situation. We need to distinguish this too. What is our faith? Do we really trust God or are we just simply exercising our exploration of different options? And Jonah introduced himself like this. I'm a Hebrew. I fear the Lord God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. He basically said that he believes in the creator of all things. Then the men became extremely frightened and they said to him, How could you do this? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because Jonah had told them. So they were afraid. They got all frightened. Said so in this situation, people may point fingers at each other. It's your fault. It's their fault. And it can go on. But Jonah told them this. Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that on account of me, this great storm has come upon you. Because of my sin, this danger came upon you. I am the cause of this issue. This is the first step of repentance. In today's world, including in church, no one wants to acknowledge their sin and repent. They're busy justifying their words and actions. And that's why a lot of people, even though they attend church, their spiritual maturity is not there. So let's go back to Matthew chapter 8, verse 26. He said to them, Jesus spoke to these disciples, Why are you afraid, you men of little faith? What did he say in Matthew chapter 6? I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink. It's not just eating and drinking, but it's all about our life. Don't worry about those things. Instead, we're supposed to seek his kingdom and his righteousness first, according to Matthew chapter 6. And he continued, You man of little faith. So if you look at parallel passages in Mark and Luke, we can see what he meant to say here. In Mark, he said, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? You're following me, but you don't have faith yet. That's his question here. In Luke, it's more clear. And he said to them, Where is your faith? I do not see it. You said you're following me. But you man of little faith, do you still have no faith? Where is your faith? He's rebuking the disciples in this situation. So Jonathan Edwards said this, God commonly suffers his people to be just upon the very brink of destruction before he delivers them. As here, the tempest arose too much that the ship was covered with waves. And it continues, God seems to be asleep and to let them alone. We may feel that way sometimes, as Christ was, and must be awaked by the earnest prayers and cries of his people before he will deliver them. So God the Father wants our earnest prayers and cries when we are facing some challenging situations. Not necessarily literal crying, but we have to be earnest in our request and prayer and supplications. So I want to show you disciples' privilege here. The first off, we can pray and we can ask for God's help. Because it says in this passage, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. If you look at these two, Save us, Lord, was a right thing to say. Because Matthew chapter 1 says, You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. It's about spiritual matter, but in a physical world situation, he's the one who can save us as well. So save us, Lord, was the right thing to say 
but next one we are perishing being afraid of the situation or circumstances that's what jesus was correcting at this point so we go through some discipline by jesus but at the same time we can become eyewitness of his miracle works so he said this why are you afraid you man of little faith that's the discipline part then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea and it became perfectly calm it's an exciting journey because we are walking with jesus we learn but sometimes we get disciplined by his words and we see all the miracles throughout the day the fact that we're breathing we're healthy we have this job we have business we have friends and we have families we have church to serve it's god's grace and mercy upon us and that's his miracle every single day we have to remind ourselves about these things so after that matthew chapter 8 verse 28 says the men were amazed and said what kind of a man is this if you think about verse 23 his disciples followed him into the boat but here the expression changes a little bit the men were amazed it doesn't say the disciples were amazed the fact that they said what kind of man is this tells us that they may not be the true disciples of Jesus yet they saw Jesus as a special person a human being a man who performs miracles instead of God himself but if you look at Matthew chapter 14 where Jesus walked on water and Peter as well the reaction and the following expression is completely different and those who were in the boat worshiped him saying you are certainly God's son only begotten son so you are God himself that's what they were saying two different reactions two different confessions two different understandings about Jesus Christ here as Christians we have to understand that Jesus is God who is walking with us even today so let's take a look at Isaiah chapter 43 this is a very comforting passage here but now thus says the Lord your Creator O Jacob and he who formed you O Israel do not fear for I have redeemed you I have called you by name you are mine so the reason why we're not supposed to be fearful about anything is because he had called us by our names and he said you are mine when he says called you by name you can replace it with your own name he called you James he called you Peter individually he called us and he's saying that you are mine so I will take care of you it continues we have other things here but mainly two of them when you pass through the waters and when you walk through the fire he said do not fear why because I will be with you he promised that he will be with us when we go through these situations God did not say you're not gonna pass through the waters you're not gonna walk through the fire just like anybody on this earth we will pass through the waters we will walk through the fire we're gonna go through some challenging situations very difficult situations in our lives it can be small it can be large it can be major yes we will all go through that it doesn't end however he said I will be with you because you are mine we have so many different application passage in the Bible but let's go to Psalm 23 the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside quiet waters he restores my soul he guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake the first verse says the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want if you feel like you're lacking something in your life then you have to think about this is the Lord my shepherd am I one of those disciples of Christ because if the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want 
And let's take a look at another situation. Even if you know that you do not lack anything, the reason for that is because of your wealth, health, and success, then you have to think twice. That's not going to give you true happiness and true satisfaction in your life. The Lord has to be your shepherd. Then and only then, you will have a true satisfaction in your life. Let's continue here. Verse 4 says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Surely, goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Verse 4 also says the same as Isaiah 43. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because you are with me. Let's take a look at today's passage. Verse 23 says, When he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. So, on the boat, who were there? Disciples and Christ. They were together. Jesus was with them, and they somehow missed that point, the disciples on the boat. So we should not miss that main point. As long as Jesus is with us, as long as we know that, as long as we believe in him, as long as we are his disciples, we should not be afraid of anything. Because that's God's promise in Matthew chapter 1. It says, And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means... God with us. Jesus is with us. If He is with us, then whom shall we be afraid of? No one. So the conclusion is this from Psalm 62. My soul waits in silence for God only. From Him is my salvation. And the psalmist explained a little more about God being our salvation. He said this, He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be greatly shaken. The last verse is very important too. We may face challenging situations, difficult situations in our lives. We will be shaken, naturally. But he said, I shall not be greatly shaken. It's going to affect me a little bit, but I shall not be greatly shaken because... God is my rock, my salvation, and my stronghold. Because of that, I shall not be greatly shaken. We talked about this wind and storm on this rough sea, the situation the disciples faced. All of us may go through difficult situations. It can be minor, it can be major. We've gone through that already. We are going through that right now, and we will go through those things in the future. But let's always remember, God is our salvation. Even though we may go through stormy sea and difficult situations, our mind has to be at peace. Only reason we can have that peace in our heart is when our Lord is our salvation. So let's take a look at verse 1 from Psalm 62. My soul awaits in silence. Regardless of the situation outside, regardless of the circumstances that we're going through, we will wait for Him in silence. Because from Him is my salvation. So if you're going through a great time of your life, then praise the Lord. If you face some difficult situations, please remember, God is with all of us, and He is our salvation. May God bless you, and I'll see you next Sunday.